Oh, I like these glasses. <laughs> it's okay. So am I. It's okay. If you want to slow down, I'll talk to you more. Hey guys, I'm Alex. Hi, I'm Jason. We're the Table Monkeys, and this is going to be the beginning of our programming series. Uh, so previously what we've done is we've laid out the four strengths of arm wrestling as far as uh, we define them. And now what we're going to start doing is laying out how you set up a program so that you can improve upon those four strengths. So the first thing we need to write a program is to pick a goal. Without a destination, you can't pick a path. So once you have your goal established, you can work backwards from there. And this allows you to pick goals that are seemingly out of reach at the moment and establishes the best way to move forward so you can achieve them. Uh, we do this with a simple breakdown of the final goal on this diagram. And uh, we use the same terms you would find detailing the basic structure of a training cycle to demonstrate how to work backwards from your goals. So the macro cycle is the entire training cycle leading up to you realizing the final goal. And the macro cycle is broken up into blocks of training called mesocycles, which contain some form of progress test or checkpoint. Uh, and these mesocycles are broken up into microcycles or the work you have laid out in front of you leading up to the checkpoints. All right, so let's say that you want to be the number one ranked arm wrestler in the world because like, who doesn't, right? So let's set that as our final goal and then we're gonna start working backwards from there. So from number one ranked arm wrestler in the world, before that, you're probably gonna to have to win a big tournament like the Zloty Tour, right? So that's gonna be this last checkpoint, again, working back from there. Before Zloty Tour, you're probably gonna to have to win a national tournament. Before a national tournament, you're probably gonna to have to win like a state or a provincial tournament. And before that even, a regional tournament. Before that, probably like a local fucking tournament just at a bar or something, right? Yeah. Sounds good. So those are your checkpoints that we've laid out at each of these, you know, progressions through these tournaments. It's kind of like uh, if you were, you know, gonna eat a 16 ounce ribeye. You're not gonna stuff the whole thing in your mouth and try to chew it all at one time. You're gonna cut it into little pieces and chew it one bite at a time, right? right. So if you look at it, it's basically the same exact thing. The final goal is the steak. The pieces you cut it into are the checkpoints. And then chewing the steak is just the work that you have to do to get from one checkpoint to the next. It's definitely not work, but. I mean, if it's a nice steak, it's just enjoyable. So yeah. who's, who's got a problem with that? So now, if we get back to the final goal being number one ranked arm wrestler in the world, and then all these big checkpoints, obviously these checkpoints, there's a lot of time between those. You might have to go to you know three provincial uh, tournaments before you actually win one, right? So each one of these checkpoints is gonna become a new final goal for a new macro cycle. So the first macro cycle that we're gonna try to accomplish is winning a local fucking tournament. So once you have your goals, you will need to establish some reference points so you can get a handle on where you are in comparison to your goal and what your checkpoints will need to be. So take powerlifting for example, since that's the world we come from. Uh, let's say I want to hit a 315 pound bench at my next competition. I can look at this 1RM chart and see that if I hit 255 for 8 or 290 for 3, I should be able to do 315 for 1 rep. This gives me an easy reference point. So once I can do 255 for 8 reps, I'll pick a competition 3-4 to four months away and try to peak my strength. And then I'll try to hit 290 for 3 reps 3-4 to four weeks out from my competition. This gives me lots of confidence going into the competition because I have measurable checkpoints that I have reached along the way. This is the same for any sport that is measured in weight, time, distance or speed. That makes it very easy to establish reference points, lay out a plan and track your progress. Now, if you consider all strength sports for the most part, every event is basically measured in one of those factors. So you know what the events are going to entail before you get there. For example, we know what the world record bench press is. Go Julius Maddox, you're a fucking freak. Uh, you know how much the log press is going to be or the uh, you know farmer's walk at your next uh, strongman competition. You know how much the shot put record is that you're trying to beat and you know how much the shot weighs. So all of these goals are pretty easily quantifiable but with arm wrestling, the competition is one-on-one -on -one with another opponent. And that presents an unknown number of variables that you're going to have to deal with. Yeah. This is why arm wrestling isn't really a strength sport. It's actually a combat sport in which the primary factor to winning is strength. All sports break down into two categories, skills and performance. Skills are made up of your understanding of the sport and your ability to perform sound techniques. So we are new to arm wrestling, right? and we're still learning the skills. So instead, we're gonna focus just on the performance aspect of the sport. Arm wrestling performance pretty much revolves around strength, 
which can also be expressed in power and endurance. So let's define those things. Strength is defined as the ability to produce force against an external object, or basically your total force production. Power, though it sounds a lot like strength, is a little different. What power is, it's defined as force times velocity, or how quickly you can reach total force production. So power is kind of like your explosiveness. Um, and then the last one, endurance, uh, we're going to define for arm wrestling as your ability to maintain 85% or greater force production for longer than 7 seconds. So uh, that's basically your ability to stop a match and bleed out your opponent. So let's consider these three types of performance and skills uh, as the factors that are going to establish your style as an arm wrestler. Then let's lay them out on one of these trusty pyramids because you know we love the pyramids. We're going to put strength as the base of the pyramid because it's the limiting factor to your power or your endurance because it's a factor in both of those uh, types of performance, right? Well, then we're going to put the skills at the top because the skills are obviously how you refine the other strengths and clearly how you're going to display them on the table. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to put endurance on one side and power on the other side because they're pretty much opposing uh, you know, types of performance. Even though you could have both, you're not really going to be using them at the same time. Is that fair to say? Yeah. So let's use this trusty pyramid to compare two arm wrestlers that we both really like. Devin Larratt and Travis Bajan. Now, as far as strength and skills go, they're pretty similar, and, or at least pretty equal in both those two categories, right? But Devin is definitely more versed for endurance, where Travis' style is definitely more versed towards uh, power and explosiveness. Now that we have a better understanding of strength and how it can be expressed, let's look back at the four strengths of arm wrestling and how they interact on the table. So once again, we're going to use a pyramid to show where the strengths line up. So hand strength is going to be the base because it allows you to access the three other strengths. Curling strength is going to be the peak because that's how you keep your forearm vertical and maintain height in the match. Pressing strength is going to be more for inside arm wrestling, and pulling strength is going to be more for outside arm wrestling. Now that we have an understanding of what strength is and how the four strengths of arm wrestling play on the table, let's get back to establishing reference points. So a good idea is to pick one exercise for four of the main strengths. So let's stick with hand strength for, for now, and use cup as an example. A good way to test your cup is with wrist curls. Everybody does them, so they're a great way to gauge how you stack up against your competition. Now, the competition is going to change based on your gender, your age, your experience level, your weight class, even where you live. Some places are more competitive for arm wrestling than others. But if you're some skinny little kid, you don't have any experience in the gym or on the arm wrestling table, you don't want to use Levon as your reference point, right? What you're going to want to do is ask around. If you're fortunate enough to have people that you arm wrestle with, that's who you're going to ask. If not, you're going to get online and ask around people that are the same weight, age, and all those things as you are. And you're going to start to find out how much these people risk curl. You're also going to want to do this, like Alex said, with all four strengths, right? So let's just give you an example of what we've chosen for the four strengths for right now. So forehand strength, it's cupping, it's wrist curls. The way we're going to test it is we're going to find out how much weight we can do for a five second hold. That's going to be our test. <clears throat> then you've already seen us do our strict curl. That's obviously our curling strength test. And we've been running that for a while and we're just going to keep running that and see how far we can push our strict curl. For pressing strength, we're going to use overhead press. Right now because of quarantine, because of weight limits and everything, we're just going to do as many reps as possible with 135 pounds. But I think once we get back in the gym, we're probably going to start looking for a one rm right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the last thing that we're going to do is uh, a close grip pull up hang for as many seconds as possible. So those are going to be our four tests to establish our reference points and see where we stack up with the competition that we're going to have to go against. Once you have these reference points figured out, then you're going to want to do the same thing that you did with the wrist curl and establish where you match up with the competition that's around you. That's going to allow you to prioritize which strengths you need to work on. And we're going to use another pyramid to lay out those priorities. It's a very simple pyramid. You've got at the bottom of the pyramid, the base, the most important, your first priority, which we believe in arm wrestling pretty much all the way to the end, no matter what, is always going to be hand strength. Yeah. And then the other three uh, going you know, from second, third, and fourth priority 
are your pulling, your pressing, and your curling strength. This chart here is the priorities that I laid out for myself. So I already have a lot of pressing strength. I don't feel that I need to work on that. Curling, I feel, is my weakest of the three. And I also feel like it's the most important. And I also prefer to pull more outside than inside. So that's why I've laid the priorities out the way I have. So let's bring it all back together now and summarize how this is going to look for our first final goal. So in this case, the final goal is to win first from both arms at a local fucking tournament. So you're going to establish your reference points and see how you stack up against your competitors and figure out what you need to work on most. And then you work backwards from your goal. So let's go back to our wrist curl for cupping example. Let's say you know you need to be able to wrist curl 100 pounds for a 5 second hold to be on par or ahead of your competitors. And right now you can only wrist curl 60 pounds. And you believe that you can add 10 pounds each month with the correct work laid out in front of you. That means you'll need 4 months to gain the strength that you'll need to win. This may be a little more else, but regardless, you can track your progress each month and see if you are on track to hitting your goal. Okay guys, that concludes part one of our programming series. Next week, we're getting into more detail about exactly how you pick your checkpoints and how you decide what work it is you need to do to achieve those checkpoints. We're also gonna talk more about the difference between strength, power, endurance, and what types of training is gonna work best for each of those. We're also gonna get into the exercise selection and the progression methods and uh, how to balance volume, intensity, and frequency to manipulate your workload, which is really the basis of all training. Exactly, so if you like the video, please like the video, leave us some feedback in the comments, and subscribe for new videos. Monkeys out. Peace. Dude, what are you doing? Yo, get on the point before our video. Why are you always doing curls before our videos, man? Because you're always out angling me in our videos. I'm sick of it. Well, dude, I got 100 pounds on you. You think that the curls with 25s is going to do anything? Well, Jesus. Might help what? Is that why you shave this silly mustache, too, to distract from your goddamn arms? What the fuck you, man? I like this mustache. Oh, man. Go! Oh, we're in that hook, honey. Drive It's a story not moving too much. Try this on. Yeah, come on!